Hello and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Randacia or Randy for short. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about percentage budgets. And this video was requested by a YouTube subby. So I'm going to just go ahead and jump into it. So if you don't know, a percentage budget is basically it is a budget that is divided up by percentages, typically three. So, um, and they're set percentages. So typically the first percentage is your biggest one. That one goes to expenses. The second percentage goes to savings. And then the third one, I've seen it a couple of ways. I've seen it, um, typically it's supposed to go to leisure, um, or giving, or if you're of Christian faith, then it goes to tithing. The most popular percentage budgets that I typically hear about is the 70, 30, 10, where you put 70% towards expenses, 30% towards saving and 10% towards the leisure. But it's up to you to decide on what your percentages are. So, I mean, it's, there's no, from what I've seen, there's no, um, percentage that's like set in stone. All right, so let's start with the pros. And just before I jump in, these are, this video is basically my thoughts on percentage budgets. Um, if you don't watch the video through, in a nutshell, I don't prefer percentage budgets. I think there are other budgeting methods that are better this one than this one, but these are my thoughts, like my, you know, just off the top of my head, thoughts on why I don't really like percentage budgets and prefer other budgeting methods. So starting with the pros, let's see. This percentage budget is easy to start. So um, when your money comes in, all you have to do is divide it by 70% in order to get how much you need to allocate towards expenses, divide it by, or uh, multiply it by 30% in order to figure out what can go towards savings, and then multiply it by 10% in order to figure out what you can spend towards leisure. So it's really simple to get started and that is a definite pro for someone that's new to budgeting. Um, and another thing that I would say is a pro about this uh, budgeting method is that it's, it, it's very restricting. So if you actually want to stay on budget, you have to stick within that percentage that you set. So if you only set 70% towards um, your expenses, then you have to stay within that 70% or you will go over budget. So, um, you know, a budget with some constraints is always good. And I don't mean like to take away from you or anything like that, but just like some structure, I should say, is uh, very good. <clears throat> and then also too, the fact that this uh, budgeting method is restricting um, means that it can be an alternative to or an additional layer to cash envelopes. So say um, the cash envelopes didn't really work out for you, but you know you only have 70% towards expenses. So as long as you stick within that 70%, that can act as like your digital cash envelope. But you would have to be very disciplined in order to have that be like an alternative. I think it's easier to have it as like a, an additional layer to cash envelopes because within that 70% of expenses, maybe you take out $40 and put it in a cash envelope for um, gas. And then you do like another 200 out of that 70% towards groceries and things of that nature. So that's why I was saying it could be an additional layer to your cash envelopes because you only have the 70% to work with, um, no more, no less. So, and then the next one is this can be a quick start way to figure out how much money to put in your sinking funds or your cash envelopes. So if you know you only have 70% or let's say, let's do savings. If you know that you have only 30% to put towards savings, then that is a set amount that you have to work with for your cash envelopes, your sinking funds. So there's no confusion 
or there's less room for error to um, figure out how much you should put into cash envelopes. So for example, if your 30% towards savings equates to about $200, then it's easy, it could be easy to put $100 towards cash envelopes and $100 towards sinking funds. So in that way, it's pretty easy to figure out how much money to put towards um, sinking funds and cash envelopes. Okay, so let's, I like this divider better. So let's move on to the cons. So the first con for me um, with this budgeting method is that you can get caught up in the numbers very easily. And what I mean by that is that, so say your income comes in and you split it up by your 70, 30, 10 um, percentage budget. Instead of focus, focusing on your goals, you are focused on, okay, I have to put 30% towards my savings. That's all I can put towards it. And, you know, and then I'm done. So instead of maybe sacrificing for a month or so, so say like you don't go get your nails and your hair done and you increase your savings budget from 30% to say like 32% or whatever. So it's easy to get caught up in pacified by saying, oh yeah, okay, I got 30% towards savings, now I'm done. So, and that's what I mean. It's like, it's easy to focus just on the numbers and lose sight of the goal you have in mind, if you even have a goal in mind. And then the next um, con for this budgeting method is that, when you first, like if you're new to budgeting and you first sit down to do, like maybe you wanna be a little bit more ambitious and do a 50, 30, 20 percentage budget. Well, if you sit down and your expenses end up being 85% of your uh, budget and you feel like there's no way you can cut down that 85%, it that can be very discouraging and you could give up, like new budgeting, new budgeters can give up because they feel like there's no way that they can get their expenses down. So this budgeting method can be initially um, very discouraging or you will need to constantly adjust your percentages for um, like miscellaneous or unbudgeted items. So for example, one month, it could be your regular 70, 30, 10, and then something you weren't expecting to happen happens next month, and now you're at 80, 30, 10. And then the next month you get a stimulus check, so now you're at 50, 30, 20. So there's like no consistency in the percentages that you are working with. So um, that could be a good thing or a bad thing, but me personally, when I'm budgeting, I like my system or whatever budgeting method I'm using to be consistent, unless I'm tweaking it to further perfect my system. But, um, but if, but with this percentage budget, if you aren't like, like your, your income and everything and all of your expenses, if that isn't consistent and it doesn't really fluctuate, you can be changing your percentages frequently. So with that, this would, in my opinion, this would not be a method that I would recommend to those that have variable or inconsistent income because you would be frustrated in my opinion because you you already have to deal with the fact that you don't know when your money is going to come in because it's irregular so one month you could be again you could be using the 70 30 10 and then the next month you're using the 50 30 20. so it's like there's no there's no consistency in your budget on top of already having variable income that you can really count on so um, at least in my opinion, if I was a variable income earner, then I would not use this budget method. My, one of my main gripes with this percentage budget is that it can, if you're not careful there, you can have an automatic lifestyle creep. So say, um, you are a college graduate, 
or you are a senior in college uh, for engineering and you're working like a part-time job somewhere at a fast food restaurant. When you graduate, your income um, is going to be much, much higher once you go into the field that you were studying, into the engineering field. So if you stick to this budget where it's 70, 30, 10, all of a sudden you're going from 70, 30, 10 with a uh, fast food income to 70, 30, 10 with a engineering income. That is an automatic lifestyle creep. And I don't say, I don't mean that, you know, once you graduate college and you shouldn't have like, you know, in increasing your standard of living. But I'm just saying with this percentage budget, any increase in income is an automatic lifestyle creep if you don't adjust your percentages. So um, you guys know that I am an advocate for um, basically just using, like limiting the amount of money that you need to uh, for your expenses and using the rest to pay yourself first and hit those goals, whatever goals you're working on, whether it be investing or um, saving for your first house, whatever that might be. But uh, definitely with this uh, budgeting method, it is a definite, uh, you can definitely have a lifestyle creep very easily. Okay, and the next con is that to me, this, the percentage budgeting method is very reactive versus proactive you have to wait to get paid or at least know how much you are going like about how much you're going to get paid before you can even set up your budget or if you do work off of estimated amounts then once you get paid you have to redo your budget to have those exact amounts like there's no real to me there's no real wiggle room when it comes to it like you have to have you have to have those exact amounts for this budget so me personally i like to set my budget up the month before so that you know i'm ready and prepared when going into the next month with my budget versus this budgeting method, you actually really do have to wait until payday to know how much you're going to get in order to budget. So by that time, if something comes up, there's no real way for you to handle like emergencies or, you know, just miscellaneous um, items because you don't know how much you're going to get paid or you don't know what your percentages are. So it's easiest if you are a salaried worker or you know, like, or if you're on a fixed income, because then, you know, you can budget to kingdom come and you'll be okay because your income doesn't change. But if you're an hourly worker and, um, or if you're a variable income person, then you really have to wait until your check comes in. And again, you can estimate what you're going to get and budget that way, but you are going to have to redo your budget, like your percentages in order to make sure that those amounts are exact. And then another con in this budgeting method for me is that this budget subconsciously or consciously focuses on encouraging leisure spending. So again, I told you that last percentage can be for leisure giving or tithing um, from, you know, from the ways the the examples that I have seen it used, it's typically one of those three, but typically it's leisure. So this budget can automatically focus on leisure. So if you are setting up your budget for the first time and say, let's go back to that um, earlier example where I said you're a new budgeter and your expenses are about 80%. So that leaves you 10% for savings and then 10% for leisure. So when you look at that, that's like one that can be discouraging for someone who who feels that 10% of their income is 
way too little because they work so hard that just 10% just is ridiculous. Like I'm not sticking to 10% of my income. I'm going to spend whatever I want. So, um, or you could, someone could have the mindset, which is equally as dangerous where they're saying like, oh, I have 10%. So maybe your 10% say is like $200. So if you know you have $200, which is 10% of your income, then it's just like, I can go and blow this $200 on anything that I want, which this type of budget gives you the freedom to do that. So that could be a good thing or a bad thing. Um, it's kind of up to the individual, but it, it's, it very easily gives you permission to go and spend just $200 or whatever it is all willy nilly. And again, that could be a good thing or a bad thing. So for me, I'm going to say that the permission to go out and just with that same example, to go out and just spend $200 just because, um, to me, that kind of limits the potential to attain goals by discouraging sacrifice. So you're um, going with that 80, 10, 10. If you have 10% of savings, you have 80% going towards expenses, which is actually very high. And then you have 10% going towards leisure, which all said and done, you have 90% going towards things that are not helping you attain wealth. So you only have 10% of your budget going towards savings. Well, that kind of discourages sacrifice because it's just like, oh, I only have, you know, I, I budgeted my 10% towards saving and my 10% towards leisure. So at that point you can just like blow off, um, sacrificing, um, more and lowering your leisure budget in order to put it into your savings. So say like, instead of um, going and blowing that $200, you maybe give yourself $50 and you put that additional money towards your savings. So you have a higher savings percentage and a lower leisure percentage. So I don't know very many people, including myself, that if I have this amount of money already set aside for me to go and just enjoy life with, um, it's gonna, for me, that would be pretty difficult to say no to and put it aside so that I'm saving, but because let's face it, saving is not fun. Saving is not sexy. So it's just like, ah, I'd rather, you know, let's go have fun with that $200 this month. And then next month I'll adjust my budget so that more money goes towards my savings, um, than leisure. So, yeah. If you already have it set up, then, um, you know, it's to me, that would be a little difficult to say no to when you know you have the money already set aside for fun. And then the last one, the last con for this budgeting method for me is that there's no real accountability. And what I mean by that is just overall, there's really nothing about this budget that holds you accountable unless you are really consciously working towards lowering your budgets every month, especially like your expense budget and increasing your savings. And then again, the 10% can go toward leisure giving or tithing. So unless you're actively and consciously working towards increasing that giving or savings percentage, then there's no, like you can stick to the 70, 30, 10 and be great with this budget. As long as you're sticking to that every single month, then this budget says like, Hey, you're meeting your goals, but are you really, could you have sacrificed in your leisure this month to increase your savings budget? Are you progressing toward like, does this budget allow you to see that you are progressing towards your goals. There's no way to see it because once you set up your, um, your percentages, unless like you're doing it some other way in your budget that you're actually tracking like a goal. So like saving for your house, unless you are 
putting like your beginning balance of what that savings account was and then how much you're putting towards it and then how much your ending balance for that month is unless you're doing that every month this budget just in my mind you just have at the very top your income comes in you have 70 percent towards here 30 percent towards here 10 percent towards here and you have all of the expenses listed under and then at the bottom you get a total that should equal um or be below that initial percentage amount so in that type of budget where are you tracking your your um your wins where are you being held accountable if you do go over your budget like there is this budget just this budget just seems like a slippery slope to me but as you can see i have way more cons than pros but again just to summarize like in a nutshell i think this budget can work for someone that is just new to budgeting or doesn't want to um be that detailed in their budget they just want to, you know, set it up very quickly and then go about their business. Um, I think this budget can be great for those type of people or high income earners where they don't really have to watch their income like that. They just need to stay within like a certain range in order to know that they're OK. So I think this budget system is good for those people. But for, you know, everyday regular people like you and me, I think this budget is it doesn't have enough substance to me to help you meet your goals, to hold you accountable, to encourage you to, um, you know, maybe sacrifice for, for the time being in order to meet your goals faster. It's just, I think there's just other budgeting systems that are better than this one. But again, this is not to discourage anyone from using this budgeting method. These are just my thoughts and my opinions. If you use this budgeting method or want to try it out, then go ahead and try it out or keep using it if it's working for you or if you think it'll work for you. Because again, I'm not here to rain on anyone's parade, but this is just my thoughts on this type of budgeting system. And um, again, if it works for you, then keep at it. Do not let me discourage you because this budget is but is better than no budget in my opinion so um i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did please hit that like button and if you want to see more of my videos then go ahead and hit the subscribe button and i'll catch you guys in the next one bye